Ah, don't, I'm here. I ran out of places to film these videos. I ran out of weird, wacky floor spaces and walls and bathtubs. <laughs> We're gonna look at some homebrew that was written with questionable creativity. <laughs> There's a lot of homebrew in Dungeons and Dragons. Some people use it for their games, some people don't, and some people like to put it out there on the internet, like myself and many other people. Some people like to wrap it up into a Kickstarter book and just, whoa, check it out. It's The Seeker's Guide to Twisted Taverns. That's the uh, sponsor for this video. The Seeker's Guide to Twisted Taverns is a bunch of taverns, magic items, monsters, NPCs, maps, and a lot of cool stuff that you can put into your D&D games. You could get this book for the art alone. And if you back right now on the Kickstarter, there's some cool dice and mugs and maps and coasters and a pop and a bunch of really cool stuff. So just go check out the Kickstarter already, guys. Jeez. So in case you're unaware, and maybe you don't play D&D or role-playing games, basically when you play D&D, there's a set of rules that you can abide by that kind of guide you through your games and your players, and everybody kind of agrees on all of these rules. Sometimes you can change those rules and make them up because D&D is a game about creativity, improv, and imagination, and why wouldn't you want to make up whatever you're playing? So sometimes people like to make new rules for the game that change their games a little bit. Maybe adding something like a new race, a new class, perhaps a new magic item. Those can be very fun. Like, have you ever heard of the Griffin Saddlebag? Just a plethora of beautiful magic items that come in cards and great art that you can get on Patreon. It's some good stuff. I've used it in my games, but sometimes Sometimes there is some real garbage out there. Also, if you wrote any of this homebrew that I'm about to lambast with a plus three flame tongue, my intention here isn't to make you feel bad or to make anybody feel bad. My intention here is to help and critique this writing that you have made. Spread the love, guys, said the dude wearing his own face. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into D&D Beyond. I'm going to sort my views because that means a lot of people have seen them. So a little bit popular people may be adding them into their games. Um, and D&D Beyond has this cool rating system now. I'm gonna go in and anything that has basically like a negative rating, I'm gonna go in and read and maybe find out, do a little sleuthing. This is a little mystery. We're gonna find out why this half dragon is, um, got a negative 40 points. <laughs> Half dragons are a charismatic blend of strength and grace, inheriting the best traits of their dragon parent. Slender and graceful, with their unearthly grace and fine features, half dragons often pass as unusually muscular elves or half elves. Like they're just really built, but, you, but they're slender and graceful. Got it. A timeless perspective. Half dragons can live for centuries, giving them a broad perspective on events. May trouble shorter lived races more deeply. Oh. I just live so long that I, I just, you all, I just, my perspective is just so much bigger than all of yours, basically. <laughs> DJ Khaled, but suffering from long life. Because of your draconic parentage, pa parentage? That's not parentage. Wow. Because of your draconic parentage, you have innate resistance to non-magical damage. Whoa. Non-magical damage, poison, thunder, and lightning. Not only are barbarians very strong for having this as their major ability that is a expendable resource, but giving it to players permanently throughout the entirety of their of their character is, is too strong. You go, you won't take any damage. I'll be hitting you and you just take half. Also, if you play as a half dragon barbarian, your rage is just like, oh, you get extra damage and that's it. Your charisma score increased by two. Your intelligence score increases by one. You also gain 1d12 racial bonus to AC. Huh? Huh? I'm sorry, what? You should not be rolling a dice to increase your- What if they roll a 12? By level one, this half dragon could have a 22 AC and resistance to non-magical damage, poison, thunder, and lightning. At level five, gain flight ability three times per day, reset at dawn, functions as fly spell. So functions as fly spell, yeah. I mean, I don't understand why like this is limited, <laughs> but this is a 1d12 bonus to AC. You get dark vision at 120 feet. That's really big. Um, and thanks to your dragon parents, you have true sight. This should certainly be balanced. You should not be getting true sight resistance and a 1d12 bonus to AC at level one. That is 
ridiculous. When it comes to this race, it isn't necessarily terribly awful or anything. I kind of like the concept. There are some people who really want to play as a half dragon rather than a dragonborn. Um, I think that the concept for dragonborns is a little muddy and weird and some people don't get it, but you know what? People want to play dragons because it's called Dungeons and Dragons. You know, I'm inclined to do subclasses because I know that there's some, <laughs> there's, there's some weird ones out there. <laughs> no, the first thing I saw. <laughs> Garlic bread domain. Toasted at level one, you've become a chef to appease your deity. You, pr you get proficiency with cooks utensils. Starting at first level, you've received the ability to make garlic bread for those who need it. You may create garlic bread at any time. You may only make two average sized pieces at any time. Oh my god. It's not disabled by an anti magic. You, you just literally create the garlic. Feed the hungry. You may channel your power to feed those who need it. You give all hungry people within a hundred foot radiance the nutrients they need to live. Oh my god. Insert garlic bread directly into their stomach. You may slip up one of your enemies. Starting at six level, you may cast grease at will. That's so great. You can infuse your weapons with the power of garlic. They do 2d12 points of damage. Uh, you may send those opposing your deity away forever. You may use an action to bring any creature with less than 100 hit points and an alignment opposite of yours to zero HP. Don't fuck around with the garlic bread domain clerics. They'll, <laughs> they'll delete your ass. A Sarak walking up being like, I finally, I'm going to destroy you. And this cleric's like, you like garlic bread? And a Sarak's like, no, I hate garlic bread. And and then this, this cleric just goes, Okay, boom. <laughs> and a Sarak just goes, ah! Ah, yes, anime swordsman. <laughs> Gloating monologue. These are genius. This, this is no longer the crappy homebrew video. This is the amazing homebrew video. Use a bonus action to loudly, deliberately make a long-winded monologue. <laughs> you gain the upper hand and holding back some ridiculous, obscure way. If you succeed, you have advantage on your next attack. That's awesome. Haunted yet convenient past. The power of friendship. Plot armor. This is amazing. Um, anime swordsman. I don't know why you have negative. 133 votes here. This is uh, this is very accurate. The necromancer. Even though necromancer is already a thing in D and D, um, you play a wizard uh, uses necromancy. But I guess, wait, huh? The horror of necromancy. Whoa! The necromancer lets you choose from expanded list of spells. Okay, draining hands, boiling blood, spawn oblex, necromancer shield, wall of bones, carry on. I don't remember these spells in D&D. Uh, &D. Spawn Oblex! After your character drops to zero hit points, you do not start the death roll. <laughs> Instead, you become a humanoid, undead creature until you kill another creature and steal its life force. While undead, you lose all class abilities that aren't specified for undeath. As an undead, if you are killed, you no longer get death rolls. <laughs> Once dropped to zero HP, you are dead permanently. Whoa! <laughs> no more, no more death rolls. You no longer have the role of death. You are undeath. Technically, that wording is not incorrect. Starting at first level, when you reduce a hostile creature to zero hit points, you gain temporary HP equal to your constitution. Hang on. Interesting ability. I feel like I heard that one before. Eldritch Claws. Claws extend from your hands. Melee attacks now deal... Uh, roll 1d10, roll damage. Why is this roll command here? Is that for like the the beyond 20? Am I dumb? I feel like that's what that's for. <laughs> Starting at 10th level, in life and in undeath, you gain health equal to half the damage you deal. If in undeath, you regain health equal to or greater than the HP of your living state, when you return to life with full health. Uh, this is not D&D terms, it's hurting my brain. Um, I kind of, as I'm gonna give this one a little bit of credit, I kind of like the idea that you can die while in this subclass and then become like an undead, and then if you die again, you um, you just are permanent, permanently dead, which is kind of cool, and then your class kind of changes as you play. I don't know, I think that concept is a little interesting. Yeah, I'm not really seeing, oh, here we go, ninja. <laughs> Rogues are sneaky, but some take that sneakiness to a whole new level. Ninjas are rogues who master the art of being unseen and unheard. 
the walk in the shadows and are adept at evading foes only to attack them from behind. <laughs> they often appear to be vulnerable. If seen at all, that is. But their enemies soon realize their error when the being the thought was weak is suddenly behind them and slipping a dagger between their ribs before vanishing again in the blink of an eye. Whoa, dude. Dang, I want to play this. Nobody got anything on the ninja, okay? Why don't Sneaky stab you in the back? You know, uh, ca character classes already exist in Dungeons and Dragons, okay? This is, an, this is a ninja. Naruto and Sasuke are gonna fucking bust down in Tomb of Annihilation. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Distract enemies at level three. You can, as an action, throw something in your enemy's face. Pocket sand. Oh my God, it's actually pocket sand. <laughs> yes crushed glass, liquid or dirt. Work with your DM to determine what substances can be used. Okay, I will, thank you. Thank you, um, Kavarath the Dark. To do this, you must make a DC 12 dexterity check, and if you succeed, your target is blind until the end of the next turn. If you fail, however, you waste your action. You have advantage while doing this action. Why do you have advantage? <laughs> why, why? I mean, I guess because it's easy, you don't have to aim very well, but then uh, why didn't you just beat the armor class? Because then you always have a DC 12 dexterity to beat, then... Hmm, I actually like this pocket sand ability. I think it's... I think it has potential. I think it's cool. It's just... I think it needs to beat your AC. And that's it. It's just a special attack you can do that can, that can blind people. It makes it easier. Shadow Stalker. At level 3, if you are in darkness, any creatures that do not know you are there must make a DC 13 intelligence investigation check. Hey, thank you! Thank you for writing it the way Jeremy Crawford intended. At level seven, this increases to DC 15 and the creature looking for you has disadvantage on the check if you are unseen and attack from where you are. Example, if you are hiding in a shadow and an orc passes by not noticing you, you lash out with a sword from your hiding place, you will actually have 1d4 of sneak damage and have advantage on the attack roll. This seems like a very complicated way to um, just do the shadow stalker feat, which already exists. I know I'm like sitting here and trying to make fun of this, but I actually want to offer some real advice because you know, if you, you're obviously trying, you want to make something cool, I want to help you, okay? I think this has some great ideas. I think what makes D&D 5e really fun is there's a lot of horizontal progression as opposed to vertical, where instead of making your numbers go higher, like making your sneak attack do more damage, giving characters cool abilities that they can do in the game is much more fun and satisfying. So I think what this Shadow Stalker ability could do is instead of hiding in the darkness and it making it hard for other enemies to see them and then when you stab, you do a little bit of extra damage. What if instead, if you were hiding in dim or darkness and you attack from dim light or darkness with a melee weapon attack, you can hit like a vital organ and your enemy starts bleeding and they take 1d4 damage every turn until they heal themselves. Making it more valuable and useful in combat and also it's just a cool ability that only this subclass can do, making people maybe uh, wanna wanna make a character and play it, perhaps. Partial artist at level 13, unarmed strikes can deal 1d8 damage. Kaboom! You add your proficiency bonus. Your unarmed strikes can deal lethal damage if you wish. I'm pretty sure uh, these are pretty damn lethal already, Kavarath the Dark. Ghost. At level 17, you move silently, and if you are in darkness, other creatures can only see you if they have dark vision. The problem with this is that you would you would get to know if a monster has dark vision, and then it would basically be a way for you to kind of just be like, oh, does he have dark vision? The DM has to say yes or no, and that's kind of a little bit uh, cheating a little bit. Okay, so what this ability can do is let you climb and hide in dark better and you don't take falling damage if you fall which I think is cool um I just don't think you need to make this whole uh not dark vision hiding passive perception because that's already in the game already what if when they were in darkness they could like teleport or go invisible or something that'd be kind of cool and then they could also get the climbing stuff which is also in thief thieves can climb um so uh maybe you could do that thing in ghost of tsushima where he's like he cuts off that guy's head and he's like ah i'm gonna freaking kill you maybe if they get a critical hit they can intimidate their foes that's kind of cool for rogue rogues don't normally have that kind of stuff uh? huh 
kind of bomb. I hope this was at least helpful for some of you writing homebrew out there. Um, if not, then maybe it was entertaining to look at some silly, silly stuff in Dungeons and Dragons that some people write. We'll probably revisit this if you guys like it, but you know what? Also, you know, you don't have to listen to me. This, this Dungeons and Dragons is kind of its own thing. It's its own game. You can do whatever you want. If you all want to be ninjas, who cares? Because this guy has two thumbs and his brain is full of dumb. <laughs> Okay, that's the end of the video. I'm gonna beam away from with my garlic bread god. Oh.